Genesis 49, 9 is a key verse of scripture in understanding how the patriarch Jacob's prophecy over his son Judah would directly relate to the celestial showcase that revealed the birth of Christ. It breaks down along three lines, which are also seen in Balaam's prophecies, which we read earlier in Numbers 23, 24. The theme is the growth cycle of the lion from whelp or lion's cub through adult to the old lion. Each of the three aspects of this verse relates specifically to the three Jupiter Regulus conjunctions in Leo in 3 and 2 BC. As we mentioned earlier, we've already seen this summarized in Genesis 49.10. Next, we're going to study verse 9 in detail. Before we do, though, let's recall the riddle of the Sphinx. And I'm going to read a section from Bullfinch's mythology here, which is going to solve this riddle for us. This is a case in point of mythology preserving biblical truth in the ancient myths of Oedipus in his encounter with the Sphinx, punctuating the function of archaeoastronomy. And the book says, Shortly after this event, the city of Thebes was afflicted with a monster which infested the high road. It was called the Sphinx. It had the body of a lion and the upper part of a woman. It lay crouched on top of the rock and arrested all travelers who came that way, proposing to them a riddle with the condition that those who could solve it should pass safe, but those who failed should be killed. Not one had yet succeeded in solving it, and all had been slain. Oedipus was not daunted by these alarming accounts, but boldly advanced to the trial. The Sphinx asked him, what animal is that which in the morning goes on four feet, at noon on two, and in the evening upon three? Oedipus replied, The man who in childhood creeps on four hands and knees, in manhood walks erect, and in old age with the aid of a staff. The Sphinx was so mortified at the solving of her riddle that she cast herself down upon the rock and perished. So here in the riddle of the Sphinx, you have the truth of the three aspects of this verse in Genesis preserved. The first part of Genesis 49, 9 says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. And this part of the verse relates to the first Jupiter Regulus conjunction in Leo on September 14th and 3 BC, only three days after the birth of Christ. It would have been visible on September 11th, and the Magi would have seen it coming. This signifies the birth and early years of Jesus, which is why it took place after the 11th. This is represented as the time when the prey or the food was brought to the lion cub by his parents, and it indicates the critical role Joseph and Mary played in raising the Lord to be the man of God he was called to be. Folks, we don't choose our parents, and their impact on our lives can make a difference, but the individual's believing will always outweigh the circumstances. There are examples in God's word where this prey is used in Job 4 and 38 and also Numbers 23. The graphic depicts the view from Jerusalem on the evening of this conjunction, showing the celestial elements of the Sphinx as they mark the birth of Christ. And this establishes the great Sphinx as a monument foretelling the birth prophecy of Christ over 3,000 years prior to this central event in human history. These signs of the celestial sphinx are also evident in signs surrounding the births of Moses and Abraham. Thus, they are not isolated incidents. Is it any wonder that the sphinx has been such a mystery to the great majority of the world? It's truly amazing what God's word will reveal to us if we only let it have its rightful say. The second part of Genesis 49, 9 says, He stooped down, he crouched as a lion. This refers to the second Jupiter Regulus conjunction in Leo on February 17th and 2 BC. The word stooped in the Hebrew means to bend the knee or prostrate oneself, and it refers to the humiliation and sufferings endured by the adult lion of Judah as he offered himself as the perfect sacrifice and Passover lamb for our complete salvation. Among the four prophecies of the branch or the offspring of God we reviewed earlier, we saw two of them, both in Zechariah 3, 8 and 6, 12. The servant and the man linked to this humiliated aspect of the Lord, fulfilling the Passover lamb requirements of the Old Testament law. The lunar occultation of Regulus, which you see on the graphic, the moon interceding between the planets Jupiter and Regulus as they are heading towards conjunction, 
shows the enemy's opposition to the purposes of God as the moon intercedes between the planetary union. The third part of Genesis 49.9 says, As an old lion, who shall rouse him up? This is a direct reference to the third Jupiter Regulus conjunction in Leo on May 8th of 2 BC. The word rouse in this verse is used as an astronomical term in Numbers 24.17, a star in the rising, which we'll take a closer look at next. The question asked here prompts us to consider that if we decide to humble ourselves in our adult lives, has not God promised us that he will exalt us in due time? Rouse tells us of how the Heavenly Father will exalt all of us, even as he exalted Christ. The branch prophecies in Jeremiah 23.5 as the king and Isaiah 4.2 as the son of God show Christ in his exalted and glorified positions. And all of these prophecies depict the sufferings and glory of the Lord in the four major aspects of his ministry. These sufferings and glory of Jesus are also depicted in his quotation from Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, as he applied it in the official opening of his ministry to Israel in Luke 4, 18 to 19. Jesus stopped in mid-verse in the temple that day and closed the book and told him that the scripture was fulfilled in their ears. He did not quote the part of the verse concerning the day of vengeance of our God, which was and remains in the future. We are living in the gap which is evident in this verse in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The Old Testament prophets saw the sufferings beforehand and the glory that followed, but the gap of our age of grace was a mystery to them, which Paul prophesied about in Ephesians 3, 9, among other places. He is the ultimate conquering hero and the perfect example for us to emulate as super conquerors that God has called us to be in Romans 8.37. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The word scepter is the same Hebrew word used in Genesis 49.10 in reference to the king planet Jupiter, his star in Matthew 2.2. 2. This is the star that the Magi observed in the rising, referring to the Halaical rising or the pre-dawn rising of a star. The word rise here in Numbers is the same Hebrew word for rouse, also in Genesis 49.9c that we saw earlier, telling us that Numbers 24.17 was fulfilled in the birth of Christ as seen in the triple union of Jupiter and Regulus here in Genesis 49.9 and 10. These sufferings of the Lord are never mentioned apart from his glory in the scriptures or the stars. 2 Peter 1.19 says, As the day dawns and the day star, or the S-U-N, Son of God, arises in our hearts, so the spiritual light of our new birth will shine before men, reflecting forever through all eternity.